Hi, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, right back here on Wager Talk TV with your NFL Fade the Public video for this week 12 of the NFL this Sunday and Monday, November 26th and 27th. That's right, I've got both Sunday and the Monday night game for you. Four games in all. We've got two very public sides on Sunday afternoon, also the Monday night football game and the Sunday night football game as well. So four games to talk about, including some of the biggest matchups this week 12 of the NFL season. If you're finding these videos useful, as always, thumbs up, a like goes a long way to keeping the content free here on Wager Talk TV. And comment below. I read all the comments. I reply back. I love the support. Let's win together here in Week 12 of the NFL. And also, Black Friday is here. I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. I want to let you know I do have three great special promos for this weekend uh, through Sunday on my page right now. A seven-day, a 90-day, and a 365-day. All three have substantial discounted prices for all sports. So check those out. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. All right, let's get right into it. Let's look at the two most public plays for this Sunday afternoon, November the 26th. We have one favorite and ding, 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 one underdog, a very public dog on Sunday afternoon. I'll get to that in a moment. But first, let's talk about the most public favorite for Sunday afternoon. And you don't have to wait long. It goes at 1 o'clock Eastern, and it is the Tennessee Titans minus the 3.5 against the hapless Carolina Panthers. I did a, stand, a solo standalone video earlier this week breaking down this barn burner of a game between two really bad teams. Uh, combined, they're now four and sixteen on the season, and Tennessee minus three and a half might seem like a big price for a three and seven team delay, but not when you're playing the worst team in the NFL. Panthers are one and nine straight up, and more importantly, they're really bad against the spread. They've only covered once all season in ten games, and that was that one win. And it was also the only time they were coming off a bye week, and that's part of the reason they got that win against Houston back in late October. They have since gone zero and three straight up. One and one and one are oh two and one against the spread. Once again, they've only covered once in 10 games this season. They've only won once straight up in 10 games. So I'm in no hurry to back Carolina. The public's not either. They've been fading them week after week, and they've done very well. In fact, if you take out the Panther games, fading the public has been profitable this year. The only reason it hasn't been is because Carolina's only covered once in 10 games, and the public has faded them in almost all of those. Um, and once again, I'm not going to buck that trend here. It'd be Tennessee or pass for me in this one. Um, I did mention, by the way, in that standalone video, I recommend you going back and watching that. I do have a free, free player prop for you. Bryce Young, over 192 and a half passing yards. And one of the things I mentioned there is that Tennessee's been a really bad pass defense this season, giving up 7.3 yards per pass against teams that average to 6.3. So if Young's ever going to go over the total, it'd be this week. But then again, I think it's actually a good matchup for Tennessee, the fact that they're facing a terrible passing attack. Uh, the Panthers averaging just 4.6 yards per pass. To put that in perspective, um, some of the better teams in the NFL average anywhere from seven to eight yards per pass. Carolina's averaging just 4.6. Uh, Bryce Young's been very mediocre after that win against the Texans, a 103 quarterback rating. He's had a uh, QB rating of just 48, 68, and 63 the last three games. So even against one of the worst pass defenses in the NFL, it might not matter. Carolina's just a terrible team, and the public is fading them once again this Sunday. All right, that one was not a surprise whatsoever. Uh, public continues to fade Carolina, but here's the public dog of the week, and uh, maybe a surprise, maybe not, depending on how you look at it, but the most public underdog this week, also at one o'clock Eastern on Sunday, is the New York Giants. That line is also three and a half, but they're a public dog at home, and that's because the New England Patriots are laying three and a half on the road, and who would have ever thought just a few years ago when Tom Brady was still at the helm, they were winning championships, that the uh, Patriots would be faded by a home underdog with the public, but that's the case here. And it's not a surprise. New England's two and eight straight up. And so you're looking at this line, you're thinking, what are we missing here? A two and eight straight up team is laying more than a field goal on the road. Their quarterback is not even announced. A uh, Belichick on Friday in typical Belichick fashion said, I'm not going to name every starter at every position. You'll find out on Sunday. And uh, as of uh, heading into the weekend here, we do not know who the quarterback's going to be. Now, Mac Jones has played in all 10 games this season. And he has thrown about 95% of the pass attempts, 324 attempts. Uh, Bailey Zapp has only 25 pass attempts. He's only completed 10 of them. He's appeared in three games. Jones has been benched quite often when the blowouts happen. But they are coming off a of bye week, so it's a really unique twist in this game. Belichick still off the bye is something you don't want to mess with. And um, if there's ever going to be a spark for New England, maybe this is the week. You know, I just mentioned Carolina, 1-9 and nine straight up, one cover all season. That one win and cover came off the bye week. Well, New England is just two and eight straight up, and they've been a money burner two and eight against the spread as well, coming off the bye week. So obviously it's a good time for New England. Do we dare lay more than a field goal there with a two and eight road team? 
Well, the Giants, yes, they won last week 31-19 against not my Washington Commanders. But let's keep in mind, New York benefited from, from a 6 nothing turnover edge and still only won by 12. Um, and we saw how bad the Commanders looked this past Thursday on Thanksgiving. By the way, Jack Del Rio fired the next day as defensive coordinator for the Washington Commanders. And um, this is these are really two bad teams, no question about it. But the public is signed towards the home dog. And with, don't call him Danny DeVito, Tommy DeVito at quarterback. And, of course, he was at Illinois and Syracuse during his collegiate career. What has DeVito done since being in the NFL? Well, he, of course, uh, won that game, as I mentioned, against the Commanders last week, a 137.7 QB rating. But once again, Washington maybe the worst defensive team in the NFL the past few weeks. We saw what the Cowboys once again did to them. Uh, DeVito in the start before that against Dallas, 67.8 QB rating. He was decent against the Raiders, though, in his debut. Uh, 75% completions, 175 yards. They didn't take a lot of chances. Uh, but still a 78 QB rating. So he's been decent so far. Six touchdowns, only three interceptions, and an 89 rating overall in his three-and-a-half appearances this season. And the public is back into veto as the home dog. It's a very public underdog this week, New York Giants at 1 o'clock Eastern. All right, those are the two public plays for Sunday afternoon. Titans and Giants both go at 1 o'clock Eastern. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Will you agree or disagree? Other games you like as best bets here in Week 12. I'm going to get to both the Sunday night and the Monday night games for you here in just a moment. But I got to let you know, it's Black Friday all the way through this weekend at wagertalk.com. And there's some fantastic special offers that you don't want to miss. Seven day, 90 day, or full year, 365 day. Whichever option works best for you, lock it in now because you're getting a substantial discount at price. No promo code needed for the seven day or the 90 day. Or if you want the one year, use promo code SM365. A fantastic offer. Get it down to below about $5 a day for all sports. That's not only college football, pro football. It's also college basketball, pro basketball. And if you do the full year, you're getting Major League Baseball next year as well. If you've been ready and waiting to take a serious long-term investment and start treating this as a long-term investment, now is the time to do so because your cost of entry has never been lower. Try it out for a seven-day for $69. That's less than $10 a day. Do a 90-day for about $5.50 a day or do the full year for just over $3 a day. No matter which option you choose, these offers are good through this weekend only, so don't delay. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, and get there quicker as always with shortcut wt.buzz slash sm. All right, let's get back on track here with both the Sunday night and Monday night games. I'm going to give you the Monday night game first because that's the other official public play this week, and then we'll come back to an additional lean on the Sunday night game for you. Um, we're going to look at the Monday night game, though. Bears at the Vikings, as you see there. And uh, not a surprise, public is on the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, if you've been following this video for the past few weeks, as most, most of you loyal viewers have, you know the public has done quite well with the Minnesota Vikings with Joshua Dobbs at the helm. And uh, not a surprise that they're back at them once again this week on Monday Night Football against the hapless Chicago Bears. You see the theme with the public. They fade the really bad teams, and it's been working at times this year, you know. One of the reasons we don't blindly fade the public each and every play is because the public's often right, and I don't like to back really bad teams. However, there is maybe some hope for the Bears as Justin Fields is back, and he is playing well, at least against that Lions game last week. They blew the double-digit lead, lost late, but Fields had a solid 105 QB rating. And keep in mind, before his injury in mid-October um, against the Vikings, and he had very limited action in that game, He'd really kind of broken out. Maybe he was had some upside to Fields now. Over 600 passing yards and a 125 and 133 rating in those two games against the Commanders and Broncos. Now, granted, those are two very mediocre defenses. I get that. But Fields in his last three full games have had a QB rating of 105 or higher. Is he finally starting to get it? Is there hope in the Windy City for Chicago? Uh, let me know in the comments below if you're buying now on Minas on Chicago and the Bears with Fields. I know many of you are buying on Minnesota, and you've been commenting for several weeks, hey, don't sleep on the Vikings and Joshua Dobbs. And all Dobbs has been doing is helping this Vikings team win, although they did not win last week straight up. They did once again cover. Uh, Minnesota had their five-game win streak snapped, but they're now on a six-game spread win streak because they've covered each of the last six games. Four of those six, by the way, have stayed under the total. And Jobs, a very mediocre 80 QB rating against Denver last week. So actually, Fields had a better game against the Broncos this season than Dobbs. But of course, his first two outings with his new team, a 102 and a 101 rating against the Falcons and the Saints. Uh, so two quarterbacks that have some upside right now. will be interesting to see how this plays out on Monday Night Football. 
But once again, the public is back in Minnesota, and it's not a surprise. The Vikings 5-1 and one straight up, but more importantly, 6-0 and oh against the spread their last six games, and that is your Monday night football game. Vikings, by the way, currently minus three across the board. We'll see if it gets any higher, if it hits above that key number of three by Monday night when it kicks off. I'd right, also want to touch on the Sunday night game for you. There was one additional lean. Once again, those are the three official public plays this week. Titans, Giants, and Vikings. But one game that was just a bit outside for making the cut is your Sunday night game at 820 Eastern on NBC. And that's the Baltimore Ravens. Public is leaning towards the Ravens minus three. Another primetime three-point favorite here. A little surprising here because the Chargers are obviously a high-profile offensive team that actually has been getting public support at times this year. If you recall last week, the public was heavy on the Chargers, and the Packers beat them outright. Chargers failed to cover and win as a three-point road favorite. Now they're a three-point dog at home. So it does look like maybe a little bit of an overreaction in the line. Uh, Baltimore, meanwhile, coming off the mini buy because they had the Thursday night game against the Bengals the week before. Keep in mind, they were losing 10-7, and then Burrow gets lost for the season, and they go on a monster 20-3 run, end up winning 34-20. Uh, so very fortunate uh, break there for Baltimore. Of course, they were coming off that blowout not blow out that high scoring close loss, 33 31 to the Browns the week before that. Uh, we'll see if the Ravens banged up on defense, if they can get a little bit healthier here with the mini buy. Um, this is a Baltimore team has been very good against the pass overall this year, just four and a half yards per pass allowed. And of course, they're taking on Justin Herbert and company, one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Uh, Herbert, let's check his uh, recent form. Uh, the Chargers, you know, throwing the ball pretty well for the most part, over 200 passing yards each of the past three games. Uh, he had that huge game against Detroit, 357 passing yards about a month ago. Um, and this is a uh, Baltimore team uh, that once again, I'm sorry, I'm talking about um, Lamar Jackson and the Ravens here. Jackson, of course, uh, back from injury here in we recent weeks. And uh, this is a quarterback who's been banged up, had the contract disputes, the, the distractions for several years. Is he finally starting to turn the corner? Um, very mediocre ratings, though, even with those yardages that I mentioned. Uh, QB rating 121 last week against the Bengals. Yes, a big showing, but just a 67 against the Browns. 96-94 uh, against the Seahawks and the Cardinals, two below-average pass defenses. Uh, so we'll see if he can take advantage of what is a, a suspect San Diego L.A. Charger defense. And I know you all love it when I say San Diego Chargers and we start talking about Dan Fouts, Kellen Winslow, Al Joyner. He's one I forgot to mention the other week. But seriously, this is a really bad pass defense of the Chargers. I mentioned the Titans earlier allow a 7.3 where the Chargers are allowed 7.5 yards per pass and nearly eight yards per pass at home this season. Um, so we'll see if Jackson can get things going here. Uh, they have been throwing the ball pretty well this year in Baltimore, and they do have a substantial pass defensive edge. Yet, this seems like an over-adjustment with the Chargers going from a three-point favorite to now a three-point home dog on Sunday night football. And this is a, a Charger squad. Back-to-back -back wins against the Bears and Jets have now dropped two straight and against the spread against the Lions. And Packers, do they get back on track Sunday night? Well, the public says no. They are leaning towards Baltimore. Not an official play, but this was the one that just missed the cut. Additional public lean on the Ravens, a minus three. And uh, that line also minus three, minus 120 in a lot of spots. So kind of like the Monday night game with the public leaning towards the Ravens. Would not be surprised to see some three and a halves out there uh, by kickoff. I might even start to see that uh, DraftKings has gone to three and a half in some spots at the end of the weekend. So if you like the Chargers, I would wait till near kickoff Sunday night. You might actually get that plus three and a half. If you like the Ravens, you probably want to play it at minus three now before the line goes higher on Sunday evening. All right, those are the three most public plays and an additional lean for you, including both of the big Sunday and Monday night games. Hope you found this video useful as always. Comment below. I read all the comments. I reply back. Let me know your thoughts on not only the games we covered here, but other games, other best bets for Week 12 NFL this Sunday. Also, player props you like. Throw out some six-point teasers, anything else you're looking at here on Sunday. And don't forget to hit subscribe and hit the bell for instant alerts when my videos go live every week. College football top 25 video will be posted again next week for the championship games. And then of course, NFL fade the public videos usually up on the weekends here as well. You hit the bell, you get an instant alert so you know when they're posted, you can watch them each and every week and take advantage of some actionable info before your friends get it. Hey, let's win together here. Comment below, let me know your thoughts. And if you want to win on a serious long-term consistent basis, Highly recommend checking out one of the Black Friday specials, which is good through this weekend only at wagertalk.com. Instant discounts on seven-day and 90-day packages. No promo code needed. Works out to less than $5 a day. Or our 365-day exclusive, what I have with the promo code SM365, works out to less than $3 a day. All the details are on my page right now, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. 
By the way, NBA up over 100 units in 2023, ranked number one in the NBA. College Hoops, number one a couple years ago. Number one the past two years combined on college and pro football side. So no matter which sport you like, this is why I recommend playing all of them. Don't try to guess which one's going to be hot on any given day or week. They all win consistently long term. College football, pro football, college basketball, pro basketball. If you do the all year, you get next year's baseball as well. Check it out. Seven day, 90 day, or a 365 day. You figure out which option works best for you, but don't delay. The special price goes away after this weekend. Black Friday specials through this Sunday only, available right now. Get on board. Get my strong Sunday NFL best bets. Perfect 4 0 sweep last Sunday on my best bets. So don't wait. Get on board now and get everything this weekend and extend it as well with those all sports discounts. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Get there quicker with shortcut wt.buzz slash sm. Follow me on Twitter as well, at Steve Merrill, two R's, one L, at Steve Merrill on Twitter. Also post free plays daily on my page at wagertalk.com. I also post free plays on Instagram. That's right, I'm on IG. Who knew? Follow me on Steve uh, Merrill underscore Steve, actually, on IG, and follow Wager Talk as well. And check out Wager Talk TV every day for great content here on the channel. Make sure you hit that thumbs up, the like, and comment below. And I'll talk to you again soon with more additional football and basketball videos every day right here on Wager Talk TV. Enjoy the games. Best of luck this week.